first lesson is that cancellation can happen basically with the push of a button. From the very beginning, Corinthian students were saying, we want you to cancel debt for all of us immediately. And in fact, for all students who attended predatory for-profit colleges. And the government made them apply uh, individually and essentially reprove that they had been defrauded. And that is what allowed this delay. That delay then meant that when Trump took office, Betsy DeVos could just stop. <laughs> You know, she she made a she made it a priority to roll back the trickle of relief that the previous administration had been granted. So we need uh, debt cancellation to be quick, and we need it to be automatic. People shouldn't get tied up in red tape, and that is a lesson for broader student debt cancellation. The Biden administration promised very generous debt cancellation, a minimum of ten thousand dollars for every single borrower, and all undergraduate debt for students who attended public universities and historically black college and universities, private. In public. So that's a huge amount of debt cancellation that was promised. It can be done with the flick of a pen by signing it. The president just needs to sign an executive order. Nobody should have to apply or fall through the cracks or get tied up in eight years of red tape. I am struck, I'm sure you are too, by the fact that they had VP Harris make that announcement given sort of her, her history on this issue. And I wonder what role you see her playing as this continues to unfold. VP Harris definitely did a, an important job as the eternal, Attorney General of California investigating the school. But again, not enough was done for the students. I've seen firsthand how people suffered under the weight of the debt from Corinthian colleges and how student debtors more broadly are suffering. Student debt in 2004 was at $250 billion, and now we're racing towards $1.8 trillion. So the lesson here that I hope she learns and that the Biden administration learns is that you know this debt can be canceled, they need to do it, they need to move quick because people are suffering. And that is why cancellation, student debt cancellation is so popular uh, across the political spectrum and with people who hold student debt and with people who don't. Right, and that brings us sort of to the latest contours of this, which is the number, right? I feel like that's where, where this conversation always lands. You have President Biden saying he would cancel up to $10,000 per borrower, over 500 organizations, that includes the ACLU, and NAACP, writing a letter to the president and to the vice president saying that number, 10,000, again, that is not enough. Your sense, for those advocating for forgiveness, is, is this all or nothing? First off, we don't use the word forgiveness of the debt collective because we don't think student debtors did anything wrong. The government has encouraged people to borrow, to get an education, to make themselves more employable in the workforce. So people are doing what they were told, and now they're st stuck in a debt trap. Again, President Biden promised an immediate minimum, those are his words, of $10,000 per borrower and more, as I said. So that's why so many advocates are saying, hold on, promising up to $10,000 doesn't cut it. Um, and, and those people who have signed, the organizations that have signed on to that letter include the AFL-CIO, the Teamsters, United Auto Workers, Working Class America is saying this is important. And, you know, canceling student debt will provide an economic stimulus in a moment of economic uncertainty and rising prices. It'll ne help narrow the racial wealth gap. It'll improve people's lives, improve their mental health. Uh, so there's really no no reason not to do this. And the danger is going too small. 